Scotty Bowman, number one in history with 1,244 regular season wins and 223 playoff victories. Uh, a remarkable career is still, even though he's technically not in hockey, he still goes to hockey games all the time. There was a great article uh, by uh, Dave Stubbs uh, mm, and NHL.com yeah. um, just about he's a hockey lifer, and that's what he loves to do. He goes to rinks, scouts kids, and uh, that's what he's done now. And a lot of people forget, even though when he, his coaching career was over, you know, he was part of the Chicago uh, organization on there. You know, we just talked about Joel Quenville. But his son, of course, was the general manager. And, uh, you know, Scotty was a big part uh, of that group, uh, that that power structure in Chicago in management. Uh, and people listen like he was he had a, his his input is always valued. And, you know, the man has, uh, you know, one of the greatest sports careers uh, in coaching that you'll ever see. When Scotty Bowman was in St. Louis coaching that team to three consecutive Stanley Cup finals, not winning any, but still getting there, uh, he was coach and general manager of the Blues. Uh, there was a period of time where he felt that the that both jobs were a little bit too much. And you know who he, he tabbed to be his replacement on the bench in St. Louis for the times that he didn't want to coach was Al Arbor. He had him as a defenseman on that team, uh, on the St. Louis team. And uh, Al was getting up in age. That's where Al Arbor got his first coaching uh, taste. Uh, Scotty Bowman would go back and forth between upstairs and downstairs. Uh, and when he was upstairs, Al Arbor would be his coach. When he went to Montreal, he uh, had a history with Sam Pollock. Uh, Bowman had coached the junior team in Ottawa Hall, the Canadians, to a Memorial Cup. And... Uh, that, so he had a history in Montreal. After St. Louis, he went to Montreal and became the coach there. And we all know what Montreal did in the 70s. And uh, then he went to Buffalo. And the, he was coach and general manager in Buffalo. And when he didn't, there were certain aspects of the general manager's job he didn't like, like uh, working out contracts with players, especially when he had to coach them. So he handed that part off to his assistant general manager, Jerry Meehan. Uh, and Meehan, uh, you know, Climb the climb the ladder of of, of uh, executiveness uh, in hockey as well. Uh, then he went to Pittsburgh and he was director of player development. Uh, Bob Johnson was the coach and Bob Johnson uh, succumbed to cancer. And Scotty went behind the bench in Pittsburgh and and won a Stanley Cup there. Uh, it just success after success after success after success. Uh, and and there were times when players hated him in Montreal. Uh, he played mind games with players. But when they were looking at their Stanley Cup rings on their fingers, they all had to agree that Scotty Bowman brought out the best in them. And, uh, you know, he was, he, was, he was a guy, he was an innovator as well. Um, you know that change where a guy gets off in the defenseman's door and a player jumps on at the other door, you know, and gets like a 40-foot head start. Scotty Bowman was one of the guys that he was, one of the guys that innovated and, and brought that in. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I can't remember if he was one of the first guys to employ pulling the goalie with a minute left in the, in the game. Uh, but something tells me that he was, uh, you know, he was, he was just, he was always thinking about what can we do? What can we do to, to, to help our team win this game and, or any game. And he was one, he was one of those guys that was always thinking, uh, you know, trying to, trying to figure things out. Well, a couple of stories that I heard Steve shot it told a couple of great stories about, you know, how, how the team did not like Scotty at all. And quite honestly, they hated him, but then they would get their Stanley cup check in, <laughs> in June or whenever they got it uh, because they won so many of them. And uh, they were, they, they put up with Scotty, but the other story was, I guess they were on a, for the for the Montreal Canadiens of the seventies, I guess they were struggling to put the puck in the net. So after practice, they come in the dressing room and and Scotty had a net, and he grabbed a puck and he said, "Do you see the size of this puck? <laughs> Do you see the size of this net?" And he throws the I guess he either shoots or throws the puck in the net. It's really not that effing. 
<laughs> and, and and anyways, they pumped seven goals in the next that night. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it was just he said he just always knew what buttons to press with with that team, and uh, you know. And it is, you know, it's funny. Remember uh, in baseball, if I can give a baseball, Cito Gaston. Toronto would have so many great teams with the Blue Jays, but they would always fall short. And, you know, when Cito was brought in, you know, he got the most out of his veterans and was able, you know, to manage veterans. Scotty was sort of like that too at the end where he came in and, Look, there were a lot of big personalities. There were a lot of really great players, but he was able to to mesh it because they were falling short. You know, he not that he resurrected Steve Eisenman's career, but he sort of told Steve Eisenman, "You've got to change your game if you want to win." Well, how many times did Steve Eisenman get cut from Team Canada? You know, right. by Mike Keenan uh, yeah. until until. Scotty Bowman came in and told him, you've got to prioritize a two-way game. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and the proof happened uh, with Detroit going on that dynasty run. Yeah. Um, you know, which was great. And, uh, you know, it, it was great. I still have that visual of him skating around with the Stanley Cup for his last one, uh, which is always a great memory. Um you know, uh, and he just looked like a kid yeah. again. Like it was wild. Uh, he's a guy. He's a guy who, as a coach or an executive, won fourteen Stanley Cups. Fourteen Stanley Cups is. I mean, the only guy that had more was Jean Beliveau as a player, coach, or or executive, and uh, he had seventeen. But it's fourteen Stanley Cups. And ironically, the place where he never won in Buffalo. Yeah, that's where, that's where he lives. Yeah. <laughs> He lives in the Buffalo area, so yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. What a what a hockey life uh, that he had for sure, and influenced so many players and people uh, in the game. So uh, Scotty Bowman is number one on our list as the NHL all time coach.